Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. I'm very happy to have you here with me today. Today we are going to delve deep inside uh, and, 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 and we're going to go over triggers. Now triggers are very important as they are the first step in your, or, uh, in your workflows. So we're going to check out what types of triggers we can make and explain more about that. But before I start, I'd like to point your attention to my store. Here you'll find all of the workflows uh, that I've worked on in N8N and also in Make as well if you want to take advantage of that. Uh, you can download them and you can reuse them, use them in your automations and you can even tweak them and resell them. I have also beginners course for both Make and N8N. <clears throat> they are a great uh, way to start or if you're switching from one another, you can take those beginners course and uh, proceed uh, with a with a much stronger base okay as I say basics the basics are the most important thing so you should have a solid uh, base background for before you start that being said I will put a link of this store in the description below so let's go back to N8N and let's start with clicking this uh, orange button in the top right it says create workflow So here we have add your first step. So this is exactly what a trigger is. A trigger is a first step. So if I click on this, it tells me what trigger, what triggers this workflow. So what starts this workflow? So always keep in mind that a trigger is a way that starts your automation. You need a way to start the automation, whether it's manual, whether it's uh, uh, from an external source, whether it's on schedule, chat, form, whatever whatever that is. And today we're going to go over those. So let's start with the first one. So trigger manually, what this does is it runs the workflow on clicking a button in N8N. Good for getting started quickly. Perfect. So if we click on that, <clears throat> we'll see this. Now, a trigger always has these round corners on the left side so this tells you that this is this is how it starts and you can see it doesn't have a connector this is a connector it doesn't have a connector on this side it has a lightning bolt so this means that it's a trigger okay uh, so when clicking test workflow so when you click this button test workflow or this button the workflow will run and you will see this green check mark and one item that means that this has started okay now a this type of trigger a manual trigger cannot you cannot activate your workflow with a manual trigger the reason why is that a manual trigger needs to be uh, needs to be triggered like manually as the word says so you need to click a button for it to start so this is why you cannot activate it okay so <clears throat> that being said the uh, the manual trigger is a very good way for you to test your workflow so you can have multiple triggers inside of your workflow and usually I have that I usually have one manual and the other types of triggers in my workflow and I use the manual if I ever want to test the workflow or test a node by itself I can just uh, connect it to that and uh, and will be done okay so this is the manual trigger now the trigger has the start button the uh, activate and deactivate the delete button and you can rename you can duplicate and you can uh, test okay so I'm going to tidy up the workflow. So this is the manual. Let's check out what other types of triggers. Now, if you see, if I click plus now here, it doesn't show me the triggers because I already have a trigger. But there is on the, uh, on the bottom of this menu, there is this add another trigger. So you can add multiple triggers. So the first one is the trigger manually. Okay. Now, uh, there is on... App event, I will skip this one and get back to it in a second. There's on schedule. So the on schedule one 
as you can see it has a stopwatch and has the same looks of a trigger but has a stopwatch so what this does is um, it's just run it on schedule so if you double click on it you'll have these rules so you can have seconds run each 30 seconds each 30 minutes each 30 days you can each one week each one month each 12 months so that's a year so you can have what you can do whatever you want you can add several rules as well but the the cool thing and the thing that i use most is the custom i don't like to use these things a lot i like to use the custom and the custom is using a cron expression so what is a cron expression before you get scared and close this video uh, the cron expression is, a, is a, an easy one to do. Why is it easy? Because I don't know, I don't understand it. I go here and I, and I click chat GPT and I enter here and I tell it, and I tell it, hey, can you write me a cron expression that runs an automation every day at 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. There you go. We wrote the uh, command. ChatGPT is now thinking. I don't think it likes it that I'm not logged in, uh, but let's wait and see what it gives us. There you go. It gave us the, it gave us exactly what we need to copy. Then we go back here and then we paste and that's it. That's it. That's what you need to do. You don't understand how, you don't need to understand how all of this work. Of course you can, you can, but uh, the, why I use cron is uh, it's much more uh, flexible in terms of, I can just say what I want and uh, ChatGPT gives me the expression and uh, it's more reliable. I've tested the other ones and sometimes they don't trigger. Sometimes. Not all the time. And the cron one always works. So this is why I use the cron one. Okay, so this is the schedule trigger. Let's check out what other triggers we have. So we have on webhook. So uh, we went through this before. The webhook is, uh, I have a lesson on that and I went, I go into that deeply in the course. Uh, but yeah, the webhook is a way to run your workflow externally, okay? So you have this URL, you can trigger it from anywhere, from any website, from even from your cell phone. Just by going to this uh, uh, URL, uh, you, you can trigger your workflow. Of course, use the production URL once you activate you need to use the production and not the test one, okay? Webhook is extremely important, is extremely powerful. It runs most of my workflow. I either use uh, the schedule or the webhook uh, mostly, okay? Now, let's see what else do we have. So we have unform submission. So once we have that, once we click on that, uh, so we can re rename our title, uh, welcome for example, description, and then we can specify what field do we want, first name, uh, element text, placeholder, so let's say name, okay, put your name here, put it as a required field respond is workflow finishes or yeah when do you want to this response so as soon as this node receives the form submission or when the last node of the workflow is executed yeah we can keep things as is and if we go ahead and we test the workflow there you go it opens up a uh, a browser window this is test version of your site jack submit form submitted and then you have here if you click on that you have here your uh, uh, your data okay you can put as many form fields as you want you have text date drop down file password text area so many things that you can do of course you can use 
Google Forms and you can use uh, whatever other ways you want or like even a form on your website, you can use that, but this is good for testing purposes. Now, be careful also if you use the test URL, the production URL, once you activate your automation, always use the production one. All right, so this is the form. Let's uh, add another one. So we add another trigger. So execute on from another workflow. Okay, so here is you define uh, that th this is how uh, if, if you want, if you're in the case where you want another workflow, uh, to trigger this okay so if you if, if you have another workflow uh, that is very big and you want to break it into pieces you can do this you can say okay this will be executed by another workflow and and here you can put the input data okay uh, you can you can define the inputs or you can put a JSON okay uh, or accept all data so whatever data that comes uh, will will be will be here okay uh, so let's uh, save this and let's name this triggers okay uh, let's now go ahead and so let's, uh, chat is a very famous one. So uh, usually you use this chat one whenever you do an AI agent. So you open the chat and then you can have the chat. Hello there. Bam, so it got submitted. And here you can see session ID, the action in the chat input. So this is majorly used whenever you're creating AI agents, okay? So, uh, yeah, now there are other ways as well. You can, an error trigger, we handled that as well. You can have an email trigger, but first you need to, uh, uh, this is a good one. You need to first connect your email address using the IMAP. So you, you should have your own uh, email, specific email. You can use Gmail, but this is more, for uh, specific business emails, okay? Now, I wanted to go over the triggers that are on app. So these are the triggers that relate to certain apps. For example, <coughs> if we go to Google Sheets, Google Sheet has three triggers, okay? Unroll add, unroll update, unroll added or updated. So this triggers whenever uh, there's a new row updated, okay? And of course, every app uh, you might find uh, that it has triggers, right? If you go to Airtable and let's see if it has a trigger on your Airtable event. So every app, for example, might have a trigger uh, associated with that you can start with, okay? Uh, so in terms of uh, which ones I use the most, as I mentioned before, uh, I mainly, mainly use the schedule, the webhook uh, for most of my workflows. Uh, whenever the uh, automation is quite big, I use execute by another workflow uh, and then, uh, yeah, I just wanted you to, uh, to check out this one. Uh, so this is, this, uh, this gets triggered by one of these nodes in another workflow, like in another workflow, you can, here you can choose your workflow, right? Uh, in another workflow, you would have this and it would point to this triggers in N8N, okay? Probably I'm not gonna find it now because I need to refresh. But uh, all of your uh, workflows are here and uh, you just need this 
to be in another workflow and point to this one. Then whenever uh, in another workflow you reach this node, it activates, then this workflow runs, okay? Let me just test that for you guys to, uh, to see. I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna create a sample workflow here. Let's do a manual one. But first I need to, uh, yeah, let's uh, trigger manually, add an edit fields, just to have a variable. Then we can trigger the workflow. And then Yeah, see, you can find your workflow here. Uh, yes, consume all data, run once, and then uh, this we don't need. Uh, this would wait for the sub workflow. This, this would wait for the sub workflow to finish before it completes. Okay, but in this case, we don't need that. Uh, yes, everything looks good from here. So let's save. And if we go if we go to our triggers workflow and uh, delete all these okay then let's uh, let's say test workflow Let's run this. Bam, it ran. And let's test this. Let's see what data. Uh, Yeah, I just need to see the executions, I think. Let's run this again. There you go. Now we have our data that is executed from this one. We sent the name Jack and then it uh, just accepted it, okay? And we received it. This is just for you guys. I wanted you guys to see uh, how this would work. Uh, all right, so we went through a lot of triggers today. Uh, of course, there's a lot more because they are tied to the app per app basis. So a lot of the apps the that are included inside of N8N might have triggers. You can use that as well, spe app specific triggers. But the general triggers that you would use are uh, those ones here. Uh, if I move these here. Yeah, those one here are the general ones that you could use and utilize in your workflow. Okay, triggers are very important. Uh, they're the step one of your workflow. They are crucial to starting your workflow. They are crucial to testing your workflows and automations. I hope this video was beneficial to you guys and you would also utilize other types of triggers in your workflow moving forward. Uh, don't forget to check out the link in the description below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, that will help the channel. Also subscribe if you want to see more videos and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.